Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 6 and getting ahead with the next topic that is 6.2 specific test tools. And in this tutorial we'll be understanding some of the tools which can be used uh, specifically at the advanced level for the technical test analyst to measure quality parameters. Uh, this tutorial will be uh, covered into two different parts as it has a lot of topics and I don't want to cover all of them together. Starting with the introduction, the section basically going to include some of the tools and uh, when you talk about the basic tools which are likely to be used by technical test analysts and uh, these are over and beyond the foundation tools which we have understood earlier in the foundation level. So we will be talking about six different concepts here we're starting with fault seeding or fault injection tools, performance testing tools, tools for web-based testing, tools to support model-based testing, component testing and build tools, and tools that support mobile application testing as well. So in this tutorial, we'll be considering the first three uh, tools, which will be understood in part one and the other three in the next part. To begin with the fault seeding or fault injection tools, so we do get uh, certain fault seeding tools which are quite helpful to uh, seed a defect and in order to check that how exactly the system behaves. So when you talk about fault seeding tools, actually it modifies the code under test in order to check the coverage achieved by the specified test. When applied in a systematic way, this enables the quality of the test to be evaluated and where necessary improved so yes this is where it's basically to inject or you know seed a fault into the system and uh, try to evaluate the effectiveness of the code by preparing necessary test cases in order to check that how effective our coverage is all about additionally fault injection tools deliberately supplies incorrect inputs to the software to ensure the software can cope up with the fault the inputs are injected to disrupt the normal execution flow of code and enable test coverage to be extended. So yes, these two tools are just mainly about to uh, in, enhance uh, the code as well as the testing uh, efforts which are being applied in order to make sure that the product works and meets the expectation. And thus sometimes we have to take a negative approach in order to see that how effective our efficiencies are with respect to preparing test cases and uh, the outputs of the same. So both of these types of tools are generally used by technical test analyst but may also be used by developer when testing newly developed code. When you talk about the next one which is performance testing tool, of course uh, performance testing tool, tools deals with uh, measuring the performance parameters of an application and uh, can be determined with help of several performance parameters of an application and uh, generally comes with a lot of uh, graphs and monitors which are helpful to define uh, how exactly the system was behaving under a given scenario when we tried using different number of users. Uh, there are a lot of parameters so uh, which we will be looking into the next slide but yes uh, when you talk about response time, uh, transition throughput or the utilizations of different resources as a part of the configuration. So a lot of such parameters are made use of and uh, additionally the performance testing tools have a unique capability of generating loads. That means a, a, a tool is capable of uh, producing a script of a user, like a single user, but the same thing has to be done by a number of users using a tool. Then of course the load generation becomes important aspect. Providing measurement, monitoring, virtualization, and analysis of the response is equally important Does the tool also supports that and giving insights into the resource behavior of the system and network components. So yes, that's, that's what I was talking about, the resources like RAM or CPU or even if you talk about your processors and a number of resources which are available. Uh, when you talk about performance testing, it uses a unique approach of creating virtual users because of course we do agree that doing performance testing manually might be very cost expensive. 
and um, you may not have enough infrastructures to have around probably 100 users working simultaneously at one place and getting that synchronization if you want to do some activities exactly at the same point by all the 100 users. So doing it manually could be very expensive or maybe not real statistics with respect to synchronization can be get it here. So that's the reason we make use of virtual users where the load generator of this tool will create the necessary load required at any point of time to evaluate a particular scenario. Additionally, talking on the performance testing tool, there's a wide range of measurements which can be captured by a performance test tool. And this is just not limited to this, but yes, some of the important parameters are number of simulated users throughout the test, how many users and what their behavior was, number and type of transactions generated by simulated users, and arrival rate of the transaction. Now, of course, each, one, each user will be doing different activities or probably number of activities. Then we measure these number of uh, to type of transactions performed by each user and how exactly they completed because each user will have their own time to complete a transaction. Some may do in less time, some may do in more time. Thus, we want to evaluate all those things. Response time is another important parameter to be measured for every single transaction performed and analyze in detail that why at some places responses, uh, response times are less than or equal to a given number of time limit and why for other transactions it are high. Reports and graphs of load against response times can also be generated and reports on the resources usage is equally important which are generated by the tool to measure the resource utilization. There are also certain significant factors to be considered in implementation of the performance test tool. For example, the hardware and network bandwidth required to generate the load. Not just having a small uh, setup or probably having a less speed can help you to get a good response time. What if you are connected to an internet connection which is not helpful for you to get the optimum outputs? So you need to make sure that you have a very good you know, setup done. The compatibility of the tool with the communication protocols, uh, maybe your application uses a protocol which your tool does not support. Then of course that would be another issue to evaluate each and every API function of the product in order to test the performance of it. So when you talk about different protocols like Sybil, Citrix, SAP, Ajax, TrueClient, there are a lot of protocols. So does your tool support that or not? The flexibility of the tool to allow different operational profiles to be easy, easily implemented and the monitoring, analysis and reporting required facilities to be there enabled. So, you know, it's just that making sure that the tool which you are using has uh, all, all the options which you may need in order to uh, evaluate the performance efficiently and at the same time because you're talking about a quality characteristics which is really important to be defined at any point of time for a particular product which is newly built. Moving to the next tool is tools for web-based testing. So of course uh, web-based testing is another important aspect where <clears throat> these are common thing and generally hosted on a common server and can be accessed from everywhere. So there are certain uh, you know app tools which are available for web-based testing. Generally we call it as uh, functional uh, testing which allows you to do web-based testing like UFT or Selenium. So these are very good capable tools of doing web-based testing. A variety of open source and commercial tools are available, not only UFT and Selenium. As I just gave you an example, UFT being commercial and Selenium being open source. But yes, there are many other tools available in the market to do the same job. Now, of course, uh, this is a list of uh, some of the purposes which shows uh, how common the web-based testing tools can be or which should have some of the uh, basic things like hyperlink test tools which should test uh, the number of links available on each web page in order to make sure that if they have a right path behind it or this is just a fake link or probably it is going to divert you somewhere else which can be very well test to avoid any kind of spams and uh, fraud links. HTML and XML checker for the tools which check compliance of the HTML and XML standards. Of course, uh, when you create a web page, it's just equal to the coding standards. We do have web page standards which need to be met based on the language used. So how well the uh, application is prepared with the codes. Load simulation to test how the server will react when larger number of users connect. Lightweight automation execution tools that work with different browsers. So yeah, we need to make sure that our testing tools, which we have for web-based testing, 
is also compatible with various uh, browsers and their specific versions to make sure that our web page or the application which you're testing is compatible with different browsers. Tools to scan through the server checking for orphaned files, for example, unleaked files. You have a lot of data which is associated, but probably it, this is no longer going to be used as a part of a user interface. So we need to look into those parameters as well. HTML spec specific spell check. This is from the syntax point of view. This is not about the English, English spell check. This is about the HTML tags and syntax check. Cascading style sheet is another option where you talk about the CSS. CSS language helps you to uh, modify the look and feel of the website and also the standards of that. Tools to check the standard violation based on the you know, international standards like 508 accessibility standards uh, in US or M376 in Europe. Tools that find a variety of security issues. A lot of web pages may encounter a security issue thus we need to make sure that how secure your web pages in order to avoid any kind of spamming or any kind of you know virus injections uh, at the same time people can penetrate into your website and hack it so you know we have to make sure that it is restricted in such a way that it does not allow unwanted users to do that further uh, the following are the good sources of open source web testing tools uh, when you talk about talking uh, selecting a web testing tool, these are some of the sources for open source where it will help you to understand that what kind of tool could be the best in order to do this activity. For example, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is consortium is W3C standards. So we know that I think we have been working with web pages for a long time and we know what W3 standards are. This organization basically sets standards for the internet and supplies a variety of tools to check for errors against those standards. So by default, you do put a header in your page, every page that doc type HTML and declare those uh, the statements as well as standards to check for the you know standards of the code what you're writing and avoiding any unwanted script which is not required number of comments being used in the page and a lot of things can be measured with help of these tools. The Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, which is what WG, this organization sets HTML standards. They have a tool which performs HTML validation. So we have different standards, different tools available to do your task and make your job easier in order to test web-based applications. Also, some of the tools that include a web spider engine can also provide information on size of the pages and on the time necessary to download them and on whether a page is present or not, like error 404, does that exist? This provides useful information for developer and webmaster and the tester. So here is just, just basically to make sure that there are certain things which are available uh, when you talk about the spider engine is mainly for having multiple connectivity. For example, if you talk about make my trip or you talk about uh, booking.com, which has connectivity to a lot of other APIs and different applications where they collect information from and they retrieve the information, availability of the flights, availability of the hotels at nearby areas. So integrations are a lot there. That's to make sure that everything is meeting the expectation and sometimes the link is not broken. So yes, this was the part one of the specific test tools and uh, understanding on how the tools uh, are available in the market, which are quite specific to technical test analyst in order to help perform several levels of testing. But yes, we have more, so we will continue with the part two in the next tutorial and following that, the sample questions on this chapter. So if you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.